This is the Geekom AX8 Pro, and it's officially the most powerful mini PC to ever grace my tiny raccoon-like hands. Because inside this blue beauty that's smaller than a Big Mac box, which is an official measurement here in the US, is a Ryzen 9 8945HS APU with Radeon 780M graphics, 32GB of upgradable DDR5 5600 RAM, a 2TB PCIe 4 NVMe, Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.3, Windows 11 Pro, and every port you could possibly ask for. And I'm gonna go ahead and spoil the video by jumping right into my conclusion. If you're looking for a mini PC that can do it all, and you're willing to pay for it, this is it. It can play retro games without a hiccup, AAA games on medium settings, do video editing, handle all the productivity apps you use, has a ton of ports, is made of high quality aluminum, is drop dead gorgeous, can be mounted on the back of your monitor, is able to take an eGPU, has a 3 year warranty, is designed specifically to be power efficient, which fits Geekom's slogan, the global leader in green mini PCs, and costs less than a grand. This specific build is $899, but you can get the 749 version with the Ryzen 7 8845HS, which comes with the same GPU. And if you use my discount code below, you can get 5% off either model. And to compare, the closest competing mini PC in terms of power is the Asus ROG NUC, which costs close to $2,000. Now the reason I'm making this video is because every time I review a mini PC, the comment section always has the same question. Can it game? And my answer is always kind of. So I reached out to Geekum asking for this review unit as I've heard the Radeon 780M is magical. And now I can finally recommend a mini PC that can game. Because this magical box can play AAA games on medium settings at 1080p and 1440. And this also helps me for my customers that want a mini PC but need something with a better iGPU than the Geekom XD12 Pro that I already sell at my store. So who do I think is the ideal customer for this? Well, that'll be home office users that need something small, powerful, and quiet. Whether it's a shared computer for the family where the adults can be productive and the kids can play games without having to buy a large desktop, or it's just used in an office where extra GPU power is required but space is scarce. And this is what they'd be buying. Now Geekom didn't disappoint with their XT12 Pro, and they somehow managed to one-up the already impressive quality and finish of that mini PC. I mean, come on, look at that color. It's beautiful. Of course, it also comes with an HDMI cable, power cable, and VESA mounting bracket and screws. Now starting from the outside ports, the front has two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which enable 10 gigabit per second data transfer, a headphone jack, and the power button. On the back, you have the 19 volt DC in where the included power supply plugs into. Next to this, you have a USB 4.0 which delivers 40 gigabit per second speeds and can output 8K at 30 hertz, which is fantastic for me since you know I love my 8K homework. There's an HDMI 2.0 port next to that, two USB 3.2 ports that can each output 4K at 60 hertz, a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and a USB 2.0 port which you would probably use for your mouse or keyboard. That's a ton of ports with a ton of potential, making this more enticing for someone who doesn't want to carry around a bunch of dongles with a laptop. But I'm sure you want to see the inside, so in true Geekom fashion, all it takes is four screws to expose the goods. And boy are they good. It's nice to see some reputable labels on these parts, and along with the premium finish, it begins to justify that price tag a little more. Here you have the two 16GB DDR5-5600 RAM DIMMs by Crucial, and a threatening Acer 2 terabyte. PCIe 4 NVMe SSD, which I didn't even know Acer made SSDs, but apparently they do, and according to the stats, this thing is the fourth best Gen 4 NVMe out there. Impressive. Now you might wonder why they put pads on the heatsink here, and I believe it's because they use this exact same form factor and parts for their Intel based mini PCs that have two NVMe slots. So they just save some money and use the same part, which I'm completely fine with because, hey, free thermal pad. I am a bit curious though why they decided not to follow through with that second NVMe slot. Was it heat? Cost? The fear of me using my NVMe to PCIe adapter to install a 4090 into it? We'll probably never know. And here you also have that Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 card. And flip it over, you have access to the heatsink and fan, so cleaning built up swamp gooch and applying new paste won't be a problem in the future. But I do wish that DC jack was modular, but you can't win them all. As for software, the BIOS is a bit locked down, but does leave some room for adjusting the aggressiveness of the fan. I left it on performance mode, and on idle, the fan was silent. Only when I was really stressing the system did I hear it.
And because the fan is so large, the sound when it's under load isn't that high-pitched or whiny sound like in a few other mini PCs I've dealt with. It's more of a whoosh than a whee. The PC itself is also optimized for AI integration, so when I ask Copilot who is the greatest technician that's ever lived, it responds quickly and correctly. But I'm sure you all want to see the benchmarks, so here's the Cinebench score. In multi-core we got 16810, and single core resulted in NCC 1701D. And though the temps did hit 92C at one point, it never throttled and the fan noise was more than bearable for the short time it was under full load. As for Adobe Premiere, it rendered my 2 minute 15 second 4K video in 2 and a half minutes, which means it'll eat up 1080p videos with no problem. I was even able to edit videos and browse the internet while watching YouTube on a 4K portable monitor connected via USB, and still didn't have a single stutter. So multitasking and productivity apps are no sweat to this. Now let's talk about gaming. Don't get it twisted, this is not a mini PC that's geared towards heavy AAA games. It's a productivity focused mini PC with a powerful integrated graphics unit where AAA games are playable. The Radeon 780M runs every single emulator up to and including the PS3, making it a perfect retro console box. This makes sense because it's essentially the same iGPU as what's in the ROG Ally, just with slower RAM. And in my testing of AAA games, it was able to play everything on low to medium settings at 1080p. In Warzone, the average FPS was around 40 on medium, but after putting everything on the lower end, I was able to get a steady 120 to 140 FPS. CS2 had a consistent frame rate of over 100, which I couldn't use as an excuse as to why I'm so bad at this game now. I mean, what happened to me? I used to be good. In Cyberpunk, the benchmark netted an average of 54 FPS, and once the settings were adjusted, I was able to play it comfortably. GTA 5, however, played wonderfully, and I was able to practice my driving skills without any stuttering. And there are a ton of videos showcasing gaming on the 780M, so if you or your child want to see how a specific game runs, I recommend looking for it. But the fact that it can run any game alone makes it huge for people that want a mini PC that can do both heavy productivity along with casual gaming. As with every other mini PC, gaming and graphics is always a sacrifice, but because this somehow packs that magical 780M inside, it's able to do both. And that's my ultimate conclusion with Geekum's AX8 Pro. It can do it all. So if you really want the most powerful, most miniest mini PC, this is the one to grab. At $899, it's not cheap. But with my 5% discount code to cushion the blow, you're getting something beautiful with quality name brand parts, a 3 year warranty, and easy upgradeability. So let me know what you think in the comments, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask and hopefully I can answer them. The greatest technician that's ever lived.